With a bounty of natural resources, Scotland has the potential to be a world leader in sustainable energy. Wind power alone has the potential to provide 36.5 gigawatts of power, and it's estimated that Scotland's renewable electricity generating capacity may be 60 gigawatts or more, much greater than the existing capacity from all our other fuel sources combined. I'm Ronald McIntyre, and this is my colleague Bruce Hyle. We are here on Egg off the western coast of Scotland to see the island's unique renewable power setup. There are only 95 people here on Egg, and the solutions to questions of sustainability within one small rural community are not going to be universal. However, they do offer us some clues to living more sustainably and show how groups of people working together can change the way they impact on the environment. Having a 24-hour electricity scheme based on renewable technologies has changed the island. It has made people's lives easier and reduced the reliance on fossil fuels. But as well as benefits, there are practical challenges involved. Essentially, we're, we're hoping to just achieve having a, a reliable, uh, clean and sustainable system that was, that was there 24 hours a day, which we never had before. The electricity system on Egg combines three types of renewable power, wind, hydroelectric and photovoltaics, or PVs. With everyone on the island connected to Egg Electric, the system benefits the community by providing a reliable 24-hour-a-day power supply with minimal effect on the environment. But Egg's power source wasn't always so high-tech or so sustainable. Traditionally, the electricity on the island came from diesel generators. The Mary Carr remembers what it was like trying to run her B&B business with limited power. You had to go outside to start it and switch it off at night. You know, at midnight you'd be walking out there in the pouring rain. It was also difficult just with fuel, getting the fuel taken across from the mainland and uh, barrels, you know, from the pier to here. Siphoning diesel and all that kind of thing. So how does uh, having a house full of guests affect your electricity use? Yeah, well, I, I, of course, I need more electricity when I've got a lot of guests staying because I've got the washing machine on more, dishwasher and the dryer. Just got used to sort of juggling the power, really. Mm -hmm. And that's still in my head, you know, that I'd, I'll not put too many appliances on at once. The electricity system on Egg was designed and built specifically for the island's needs. But while life on a small island might be considered by some to be idyllic, being cut off from the mainland grid poses extra challenges in terms of how the community sustainably uses power for heating space and water. It's fairly traditional on the mainland to use electricity for heating water and for heating space in homes. What happens on Egg? Well, traditionally, before the electricity came along, um, most people heated their homes and their water through um, back boilers and their stoves. Um, now that we've got the electricity, then we have options. Um, some people now have immersion heaters, um, but we also, having installed a lot more solar thermal panels, people are using those. What we tried to do was basically make houses warmer. Uh, a lot of energy was being lost, particularly in the old houses, through the walls and through the roofs. So we did a huge insulation programme, um, and two houses in particular had a lot of insulation installed. Roughly half of Egg's houses are currently heated by coal, but as well as emitting carbon dioxide when coal is burnt, the economic and environmental costs of transporting fossil fuels is enormous, with some coal supplies coming from as far afield as Poland and even Australia. How much reliance is there on wood for domestic fuel at the moment? There's always been some. Some people use more than others. Some people try and rely almost solely on wood, but very few. With a reliable and well-seasoned supply, more people will will take up using wood fuel and rely less on coal and kerosene. Being separate from the mainland, a tradition of recycling has been established on egg, with old materials being reused wherever practical. Not everything on egg that is unwanted can easily be reused. Being an island presents extra challenges in terms of recycling and managing waste. Like us, the islanders are limited as to what they can do with the amount of waste that comes from food packaging. It's out of your control as to what you can buy in the packaging and things, and you have to have to deal with it. Um, ideally, we can grow a lot more food locally, which will cut out a lot of the packaging. What kind of food deliveries do you get from the mainland, and how frequent are they? At the beginning of the season, I'm reliant on pretty much everything coming from the mainland, whether that be meat, veg, a lot of my fish products. You know, for example, if a boat gets cancelled and you've ordered a big meat order, you know, it's sitting there waiting. People on the island are aware and are starting to grow things and are selling the excess that they produce. Obviously they're keeping for their own use, but they're selling any excess. 
So it's really about trying to replace locally uh, the stuff that we're having to bring in at the moment. Uh, and most of that is the fresh foods, um, which, you know, which may come in in bits of packaging. Because we are an island, everything that has to be shipped in by boat, so you're very aware of the amount of things that has to be brought in, and also very aware of the waste that has to be taken off. And, and by seeing all these things, it makes you very aware of, of, of what you consume at the end of the day. The Community on Egg is taking a proactive approach by attempting to tackle huge challenges that face us all, issues like food, waste and energy sustainability. Together the community is committed to maintaining their role as an island going green.